Good morning. I'm trying to see if my volume's all the way up. Good morning. I'm Linda with Pinky Mall Sisters in the Kitchen. Um, Mary is home today. Um, if the weather is good, we'll both be cooking at her house tomorrow. But um, we, you never know what the weather's going to do, and we certainly hope that it passes us by. But um, we didn't want to run the risk of um, somebody being on the road and, you know, getting some bad weather come through. So I'm cooking by myself today. And I am making chocolate caramel sauce. If, and thank y'all for joining uh, me. And I miss my sister, but I'm, I'm pretty sure she's on the other line or she is on uh, watching. And I uh, believe Carla is too. So um, they'll be helping us out with any questions that you have or anything. So... Um, when I made um, the other day, when I told y'all I was going to make some chocolate caramel sauce, I did make it after I got off the air, but um, I didn't do it on video. So I wanted to do this today. It's not going to be a long video, but um, a lot of times you want something to either go over a, a plain cake, like a bunt cake, or you want something to top ice cream, or to go over pancakes, or... Uh, you know, yogurt or oatmeal or whatever. I guess this would be kind of sweet to go over oatmeal or yogurt, but um, maybe not yogurt. But anyway, uh, so this is what I'm making today. You can make this really easy. It is not intimidating. It's like everything else that you do in the kitchen uh, that has to do, well, I guess any cooking, not just baking. It just takes a little time and patience. So, um, I have got, and y'all know we're in, uh, sponsored by Imperial Sugar. We use extra fine sugar. I'm using the Ghirardelli um, Semi-Sweet Chocolate. Uh, most recipes you see will call for dark chocolate. Y'all know I'm not a fan of dark chocolate. So I, I prefer milk chocolate, but I compromise and I do the semi-sweet. So this is four ounces. It comes in eight squares. And so the recipe is three ounces. So I'm using six of the, of the squares of chocolate and I'll put these up um, to go with something else that I'll be making later on. So you can see here, I moved the camera back a little and I am so sorry. Yesterday I didn't have the camera back far enough. So um, I apologize for y'all that couldn't see when I was poor. I guess nobody could see when I was pouring the peanut patties up because I had the camera too close to me. So I pushed it back a little bit today. I've got my burner on medium over there because I want it to be hot when I go over there to start melting the sugar. But I want to go ahead and finish this chocolate. You need to do this first because you want to have it ready. You don't want to get that ready and then have to wait because this all has to be done real quick after... Um, you get through the, with the process, and I'll show you about that. So get your chocolate ready. Um, and probably some of you are going to ask, can you use chocolate chips? Can you use some other form of chocolate? Um, I, I'm going to tell you what I use because I know how this works. Um, we say this many times, Mary and I both do when we're cooking. There's lots of ways to do things. This is the way that I'm doing this recipe. So if you ask about, can you use this? Can you use that? Um, then um, I'm not going to, I, I'm not going to be able to answer a question how it's going to turn out if I haven't tried it. Now, I will tell you this, that white chocolate and, and uh, milk chocolate or semi-sweet or dark chocolate, they work completely different than white chocolate. White chocolate is a different ratio altogether. So um, I hope me saying that doesn't confuse you. But um, for this recipe, you need to use either dark or semi-sweet. So I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of these. I'm just using my knife to just uh, get these charred. I'll do it one, one thing at a time. It doesn't take long to do it. And you probably wouldn't have to chop it as fine as I do. But it makes it whisk together. It gets smooth a lot quicker if you have it in really thin shards. So uh, that's what I'm doing here. And I'm being real careful. Because I'm always careful around knives. 
So this is probably not something that anybody needs to know how to do. It's just I wanted to show those that didn't know how to do it. Make sure you have a cutting mat or a cutting board or something. And if you'll notice, I put paper towel underneath the edge of my cutting mat because uh, when I made this the other day, this chocolate tends to kind of fly when you're doing this and uh, meaning it gets off of your mat. And when you, if you've ever dealt with chocolate like this, when it gets on your counter or if it gets wet, it's just gonna smear everywhere. So I decided today I would just put a little piece of paper towel around the edges of this. I didn't go all the way under the mat because then the mat won't stick. I just went to the edges. I think that's good enough. Okay, so this is three and you see how that did? It just kind of scatters when you when you pick that up and it's on my hands and it's like it sticks. It's like it's glue, it sticks to you. Okay, so we're gonna move over here to the stove and um, get my burner on. Now caramel, like I said, it's something that's very easy made. It's just something that takes a little bit of time and you have to work really fast. And y'all can see that where that pot is, right? Okay, so I've got it just a little past medium, but I'm gonna turn it back down to medium. So you want a heavy boiler when you're doing this. You don't want a thin boiler. You want one that you can whisk um, in um, because you're gonna be doing a lot of whisking. So I've got this hot. I've got one half a cup of granulated sugar and all caramel is, is basically it's sugar, heavy cream, and vanilla. But I'm doing um, chocolate caramel. And actually, it's going to be salted. So I'm going to use some sea salt. And it, this is the sea salt that I use. I don't think you can even get this little canister anymore. Um, I order it, and it comes in a bag. ordered off of Amazon. I like it because it's... You can tell it's um, it's flaked. It's not just sea salt. It's flaked. And I just like that with my baking. I put it in my buttercream. Um, I put it in uh, a lot of things to cut down a little bit on the sweetness. And um, it's Pacific Blue. And we're not, you know, they don't sponsor us or anything. This is just what I like to use. But if you order it from Amazon, it's going to come in a pouch. It's not going to come in this. I don't think you can get it like this anymore. Okay, so what I'm doing, I don't have anything in here but the sugar. And you can, um, it's going to take just a little bit to start melting. So when this gets right, it's going to be completely liquid. It will, it will be, it'll almost look like a light amber syrup. And that's how you make, or that's the beginning of making caramel. So um, I've got a whisk out. And I will use this some, but the other day when I made this, I used this. And the reason I use this is because it's a lot easier to get those crystals off um, when it, it hardens really quickly. Um, and I, I know I'm jumping ahead of myself, so I probably just, just wait and let y'all see it. But it will go back to the liquid stage um, after, um, you know, after it after you get the, everything whipped in and get that whipped cream in. This is a little spatula here that I have had for probably 40 years. Um, it come in a cheese set. I use this thing all the time. It's just something that it's just right. Um, Y'all know I have little hands, but um, it's, it's, it's just right for so many things. And so I'm going to use this when this starts, starts melting. You'll also need a spoon. Or a knife. I may just use a knife because when this starts hardening, it's gonna it's gonna stick on here. You don't want any butter or anything on it. This doesn't have butter in it, so um, you can't spray it or you can't um, you know oil it or take a butter wrapper and do that. You don't want to do that. You don't want anything on either one of these. So it'll take just a second here to start. Um, getting hot enough to burn. 
Um, now, you can burn sugar real easy, so you don't want to turn it up on high. Um, let's see. Um, if y'all want the comments off, y'all can swipe them off. I don't have to do that. Y'all can swipe them off of your device. I'm trying to leave them on so I can see if anybody asks any questions or I guess Mary and Carla's going to answer the question. So I, I guess that was that was silly of me. I don't have to do that today. But um, anyway, my boiler's hot and it's uh, it hasn't started melting yet. But as soon as it starts melting, I'll show y'all what it looks like. So yesterday we talked about... Um, I'm making cookie dough up ahead of time and putting it in the freezer and um, labeling the cooking instructions, the baking instructions, so you don't have to go back and dig out your uh, cookbooks to do that. And I think I mentioned, I don't want to, I don't want to read, you know, I don't want to um, say what I said yesterday, but I think I mentioned several cookies that I really like, um, which was the course, shortbread, the pecan sandies. I'll be making both of those. Um, the sugar crinkles, uh, Scandinavian almond cookies, ribbon cookies, and orange date nut cookies now, and ginger cookies. Now, I used to make a lot, lot more than that. We do make fudge. Uh, Mike usually helps me with that, but um, um, there are several different kinds of fudges you can make. You can make some um, the old-fashioned way, which, honestly, I'm not even a fan of the old-fashioned fudge. And I know that some people are, but I'm not. Um, I like the really creamy fudge. I don't know if you can sh see this right around the edge where that's starting to, starting to melt. Just a little bit, little bit melted. But it won't take long to start melting it once it starts melting. Um... Uh, Okay, it is difficult to see with the comments, and I, I guess I could go ahead and swipe these off, uh, but it's you're still going to have to you're going to have to get them off of your um, device too. Um, so if, for those of you that don't know, just swipe it to the right, and uh, the comments will go off. So we're just I'm not going to even start stirring this until it gets a little bit more uh, melted. Again. Don't turn your burner up all the way. Uh, don't rush it, because if you do, you're going to wind up with burnt sugar and have to start over. So uh, make sure that you uh, just kind of do this uh, um, on a, a no more than a medium. So when you're making ice cream at home or something and you want different sauces, this is great to have. You can put it in like a little 8-ounce uh, mason jar um, or something that's got a lid on it and put it in, um, uh, store it in your refrigerator. And then, uh, when you take it out, um, with it being in a glass jar, let it set out just a little bit and get the cold chill off of it. And then you can microwave it a few seconds and it'll be easy to, to, uh, ladle out. So if you didn't add the chocolate sauce to the chocolate, sh uh, shards to it, you could just have just regular caramel sauce. And caramel sauce is, you know, you you think you want to fix you a hot fudge sundae or something. And I know this is fall and fixing head into the winter. But um, we still like ice cream here in the wintertime, too. So um, you could have some on hand to do that. See where it started to melt? And it just looks real, real amber. So I'm not, um, not going to stir this just yet. I'm just letting it just do its thing. And once I add the heavy cream plump up, because you're pouring cold over hot, and that's where you have to just whisk, 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 and let it continue melting until all those lumps are gone. That takes just a little bit of time. Once you get that done and you add the chocolate to it, then uh, it's just a matter of a couple of minutes till the chocolate all melts because you're pouring really soft chocolate into a hot mixture and then you add your vanilla. okay <laughs> sorry about that and that little glitch you could see that that's all melted and i mean it it went really fast if i would have 
If I would have kept my eyes off at another second or two, I would have had burnt caramel. But this is um, this is real good right here. It's a beautiful color and it's all melted. So now I'm going to I'm going to put it back on the burner here and I'm going to pour um, I'm going to pour my heavy cream in it. This is heavy whipping cream. I use the one from Kroger because um, number one, it's cheaper. And number two, it has a longer uh, goodbye date on or, or longer date on it than uh, some of the other brands. Um, so I usually keep a couple quarts in the refrigerator at all time, at least two quarts. Sometimes I keep more than that. I took that off just a second, so I wanted to um, get this hot again. And I'm hoping, I don't know if y'all can see this or not without me, without me tilting it. I can't hold the camera and pour this in at the same time because I need to whisk. So I'm going to pour this in here. This is heavy whipping cream. And you, you're going to see that it's all clumped up. See where it's all clumped up there? But I'm going to I'm going to uh, stir this and and let it keep melting. So you'll see that this right here. Now that that just looks like a mess, don't it? Well, don't worry about it. It's gonna it's going to uh, melt back out and get smooth. And this is what I was talking about. You have to you have to get this off. And this is just easier to get off than it is of a whisk and that's why I'm using this instead of the whisk. So you pour that cold whipped cream in there and then you um, see it's gonna be around the edges but don't worry don't think it's ruined it's gonna it's gonna come together it just takes just a little bit to come together. Now, I used a whisk the other day, and it was so hard to get it off of those wires that that's why I'm doing it like this and trying to just let this melt on its own until it starts smoothing out. Now, if you, if you do turn your back on this and you leave it for even like five seconds and it burns, the best thing for you to do is just run some hot water in this and start over because you do not want burnt caramel taste. It's, it's, it's not good. So just keep stirring it. And if you want to use a whisk, you can absolutely use a whisk. I'm just choosing not to because, um, about half of this clump, about half of this clump right here would be, um, and I know I said, well, no, I was going to whisk, but about half of that is going to be stuck in between these wires. So that's why I'm uh, just using this. Now it's also going to clump, uh, clump up around the edges, so you just keep working it. And keep working it until this starts to melt. I didn't time this the other day, so I don't actually know how long it takes. But um, just um, just don't leave it. It's a beautiful color. It's a beautiful caramel color. Acorns are falling. Our carport um, has um, a metal tin on it. And we have a oak tree on both sides of the carport. And those acorns, our ground is literally covered in acorns. They sound like, um, I mean, I'm in here now, so I know that acorns falling. But if you're sitting on the couch and those acorns are falling, sometimes it sounds like little shotguns going off. It is so loud. 
If you're not used to what it is, you, it would scare you half to death. Our neighbor even hears them going off. When they fall and hit the ground, they're just, they're just everywhere. I remember uh, a few years ago when Logan, Edward Debbie's grandson was, I don't know, he's probably about four years old. They were here Christmas and uh, they were walking out in the yard with him. And he calls, he calls Edward, they call Edward and Debbie Pinky Mom, Pinky Mom. And uh, he said, he picked up one of them. He said, Pink Paul, he said, what is this? He'd never, he'd never seen an acorn, and he didn't know what in the world they were, and Edward told him it was acorns. I thought that was so cute. Okay. You want all that caramel melted, because if you don't, um, you definitely don't want to put your chocolate in here until that caramel's melted. And if you don't melt it, then you're going to have a, a big clump of caramel in your sauce, and you don't want that. And you may think it's not going to melt, but it melts, and it's the, the clump has already gone down some, and I'm working this around the edges, so it's already started. You can see right there, I hope you can see, where it's already cleared the boiler. You just want to make sure your burner's not on too high, and you keep stirring it. And when you're doing this, don't use too small of a boiler, because um, especially when you put that heavy cream in, it can bubble up. So make sure you've got a boiler. This is um, this is a salmon's boiler, and it's two and a half quart. And this is what I usually use when I'm making... Um, like small batches of candy, like the peanut patties that I did yesterday, or um, something like this, a syrup that I don't want to boil over and get all over the stove. I usually use these boilers. I have two of them, and, and that's what I usually use. Okay, you can see my clump is getting smaller. It's about half the size as it was long ago. And the bot bottom of my boiler is clean, so... It's hot standing over this hot stove. I didn't turn on the air conditioner in the utility room. You see how smooth that bottom is? If you were using a whisk, you probably would still have some around the edges, but this is just a perfect little tool and it is metal. And I think that I would, I would say recommend to use a metal one and not a silicone one because, um, uh, uh, this is really, really hot, and even though silicon is good up to so many degrees, um, I think that I wouldn't chance the silicon. I think I would use a metal. You don't want to wind up with little bits of something in your caramel. So, um, Mike has been wrapping Christmas presents, and I try to get as many sacks as I can so he doesn't have to um, spend hours doing it. But I think he's just about got all the kids' gifts wrapped. And, um, which helps a lot. It helps an awful lot when you're, when you're in the kitchen cooking, it helps to have someone to, to take up the slack in some other ways, which Mike always does. Okay, now I know that uh, my mama, she liked to do things in a hurry, and she didn't waste no time in doing stuff, and I know that uh, some of y'all might say, well, you know, if it's going to take that long, I'll just go to the store and buy me a jar, which, you know, anything just about that you can cook at home, you can buy. We all know that, but it's, um, it's not, in my opinion, homemade is better. And just like, just like I've said many times before, takes a little bit of time to do something, but it's worth it in the end. By the time you probably get your clothes on and go to the store and get back, especially if you're several miles from the store, you could have the caramel made. And there's good, there's good caramel sauces. I've bought caramel sauces before, but I prefer it to be homemade. With us growing up in East Texas, um, 
where we where we were accustomed to bad weather, Nacogdoches. Um, and sometimes we're north of I-20. Sometimes south of I-20 gets worse weather than north of I-20. But um, and then sometimes you always hear people talk about tornadoes in tornado path. Sometimes they go north or south of you. They're still north of I-20, but they either go north or south of you or east. Um, yeah, north or south of you. Um, so I always, I'm always really weather conscious because, you know, we grew up with Pinky Paul and Mama being very, very frightened of bad weather. And y'all heard us tell some stories about that. We just about always had a storm house where we lived. We don't have one here. We've never, we've never lived in a place where, as an adult, me as an adult and Mike, the where we've had a storm shelter. But uh, many people in East Texas do have them. Uh, they have them either, you know, years ago, the storm shelters were all outside. Now you can get them installed in your house or in on your garage or carport or wherever. But the ones that we grew up with were underground. And it was one that Daddy dug and put a roof on and a door. And that's, those are the ones we went in until... They built those last two rooms on our house, and and then they, Daddy built a, a big, long basement um, underneath Mom and Daddy's bedroom, and all you had to do was lift up the closet door in the clo in the, in Mom and Daddy's bedroom and walk down the stairs, and you were in the you were in the storm house. And back then, and even now, basements are not something that's prevalent in East Texas. Uh, it's just, I don't even know of any houses that have them, and I'm sure there are some that have basements, but that's not something that we have here uh, as a rule. It's not. Okay, I've got just a little bit more melting to do. You can see it's almost all melted. Now, Mike, when he makes caramel apples, and he used to make them every year, right when football season started. He would get Granny Smith apples and he would make caramel apples and he would peel all the little craft caramel squares and um, add a little bit of water and he would make caramel apples out of them. But, um, you know, now you could buy the bags of caramel that you can melt, which you don't have to unwrap the wrappers. It's got a little tiny taste to it that I don't like. It's a uh, uh, but it is a lot easier than unwrapping the squares, like well, what he's always done. Okay, we are getting really close to this being all melted and ready. And I'm not going to take this out because I want every bit of that caramel in there. And I'm going to be making up some cookie dough before long. And when I make it up, um, I'll do a video and show y'all. Um, I'll probably make one, one kind of cookies and do a video and show you how, I've, uh, how I put them up and put them in the freezer. Now you can see I've got this burner on very, very low. Because if I had it on high, this would already be burnt. Or even on medium. Almost there. Just a little bit more. Back when Mama was still able to cook and bake, she would she would start and she would bake cookies for days. And you'd go to her house, and every container in her house would be full of something for Christmas. She'd have candy and cookies and just all kinds of stuff in there. Got just a little piece left that I'm trying to get melted. You see how smooth that is? Now 
Now, you don't want to put your vanilla in and salt until right at the very end. Um, it's um, kind of makes it bitter if you cook vanilla in something, so you always want to put it in at the, at the very the last step you do when you're making something like this is to put your vanilla in. Okay, I've got just a tiny bit there. Just a tiny bit more that I need to get blended in. It's not anything that's hard to do. You just have to be patient with it. You can't rush it. chocolate over here. I've got my chocolate. Now it's when I put this chocolate in it, it's not going to look caramel anymore. It's going to look chocolate because that chocolate is going to overtake the caramel color. It's going to melt really quickly because that chocolate is is uh, very soft. So, okay, we've already got it melted, and the burner's off. So, all I need to do right now is just add my salt, which I'm adding an eighth a teaspoon of salt, sea salt, flake sea salt, and I'm adding a half a teaspoon. A vanilla extract. Whoops. A little, little bit. Poured a little bit more than a half a teaspoon. But all you need is a half a teaspoon. I just want to put that back in the... Now I guess this took, the whole thing took about 35 minutes from start to finish from the time I first came on with my, but you see how smooth it is? And it's really delicious. Now, if you if you are a dark chocolate fan and you want to use dark chocolate, by all means, you can. Um, but um, because I don't like dark chocolate, I use semi-sweet. So um, I'm going to let this cool just shortly before I put it in my bowl, and then I'll take pictures and put it on here for y'all. So um, I hope y'all have enjoyed this video. It's not, I know it was very, something very simple and um, not a big, you know, not a big video, but it's something that uh, several of you said you'd like to see. So I just figured that today would be a good day to do it. So I thank y'all for joining me. Um, Mary and I love y'all. We thank you for your support. We um, love it when you share our page and tell your friends about us. And nothing happens, and the Lord willing, we'll be on together to mark Mary's Cooking Live and at 10 o'clock Central Time. And um, prayers for safety for everyone today from the storms. It's, uh, um, it's probably going to pick up steam as it moves east, so it looks like Louisiana and Mississippi is going to be in the target and maybe Arkansas. And then as, as it moves further east, Alabama and uh, Georgia, however far it goes before it plays out. So we'll be thinking about everyone and uh, keeping everyone in our prayers. So thank you again very much. Uh, be sure to count your blessings. And I really appreciate everyone joining and watching me today. Bye-bye.